South High School where tonight the Red Wings take on Bayport. Hello everybody, my name is Mike Martin. Joining me is a coach, Chris Wright. Chris, this is a really big game for South. Big game for uh, Bayport too. They come in 6-0, and tied for first place. Uh, South has to win two more games to uh, make it to the playoffs, but uh, they got a tough road tonight, boy. Yeah, in, in front of them last, and this is just a super night. There's so much stuff going on here. Uh, in front of uh, Sheboygan South today is you got number five ranked in the state, Bayport. You're talking about a team that's really solid, putting up a lot of points. Uh, there's a big football team, and there's no question South's going to have their handful. But the weather has changed. Uh, you know, it's dark now. Before it always kind of started, it was still kind of a light out. There's a lot of differences going on. And, you know, if, if South can put things together, they could upset Bayport. One thing that troubled South last week is they had a great chance against Manitowoc, but turned the ball over four times. Tonight, it's essential that they don't put the ball on the ground. The next two weeks for South will be my emphasis for the next week in the North South game as well. One of the things that have hurt South and Coach Hine this year is the turnover bug, and it's interceptions and fumbles at the wrong time, and, and that just kind of stuff. If you're going to bump off uh, the fifth ranked team in the state, which we've seen a, a South team do here, knock off a number two ranked team is you got to take care of the ball and kind of like a week ago I think very with North beating East I think a very important thing for Sheboygan South is they need to keep the ball out of Bayport and so on offense they got to control the ball and take care of the ball. Well, one thing South does do a good job of is pass the ball and if they can do that tonight like you said you know they can uh, maybe uh, keep it out of Bayport's hands but to make the passing game work, I think you still have to be able to run the ball a little bit. Yeah, and I think it all starts up front, Marty. There's, I, I, Sheboygan South's got some big kids, and their front line, I think, can match up against Bayport a little bit. And if you give Canoe some time to you know, throw the ball to Gregory and Martinez, maybe things will, will open up for the running game, and, and maybe something can go with that. But I think you're, you're right, Marty. I think the running game's going to have to go and the pass game. And, you know, they've had a... They got like a three-headed running back group over here at South too, so they got lots of guys that can carry the load. But you know they're going to have to run. And a couple weeks ago, we didn't. Last couple times here, that the run game didn't work as well. Now you mentioned uh, right at the right off the top is that it's a big night tonight. It's homecoming, so we'll have a nice performance by the band at halftime. It's also celebrating 50 years from uh, 1962, yeah. the undefeated South High football team. At the end of the season, they were ranked number one in the state, and uh, we have eight of those gentlemen here tonight. Hopefully, they'll all make it up into the booth, and uh, we'll be talking to those people at halftime. Yeah, I, it, I don't know. I'm kind of old-fashioned, and you know things like this. No. <laughs> Get, give me chills, you know. I, I'm old school. I wish, you know, the, the the Rose Bowl was always between the Big Big Ten and the Pac-10, and that's just how it always is. And, you know, when you get things like this, it's really special. And, and you know, we, we forget so easily about successful groups and, and people, and they kind of go in the past. And I think it's really neat that Sheboygan South brings these guys back. Yes, it is 50 years later, but, you know, at that time they were ranked number one in the state. And, you know, that is quite an accomplishment. It doesn't matter if it's in the 60s, the 50s, the 80s, the 90s, or now in the 2000s. I think it's a, it's a real neat thing. You know, talk about nostalgia. I can remember when I was a kid and my brother Charlie well, taking me to games when they played. And, uh, you know, he knew right off the top they were going to be a great team because some of those guys he actually coached in basketball over at St. Clement, Saint Clement's. Well, I saw, and I looked at the schedule, too, at the conference is the only. It's Oshkosh. It's not Oshkosh North and West. It's one Oshkosh. It's Appleton. Not three Appletons like today, and it's East and West. There was no trouble, and there was no. I mean, so those are big schools, and Mantwog was a big school, and I mean that was. I mean that's when just you had city teams, and they played Kenosha. I mean, I think I was looking. They only gave up 34 points all season, and they scored like 200 and something. It's like what a what an incredible team that must have been. Yeah, they were an awful group, uh, awful group, and an awfully good team. And uh, we we'll look forward to, to interviewing and talking to those guys at halftime. We're going to step out right now, and we come back. We'll have the uh, starting lineups and the kickoff for tonight's football game. Smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today.
behind the wheel. Always watch for people walking and biking. It's Wisconsin law to give bikes at least three feet when passing. In Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. People ride bicycles to go places, get exercise, reduce pollution, save money, and have fun. Watch for people riding bikes when you're driving. Share and be aware. We're all responsible. Local government, local educational institutions, and local community members all use cable access TV to communicate their message. They depend upon it as an affordable means of outreach. Public educational and government access television empowers local government agencies, individuals, and groups to use the media to speak directly to their constituents in a more direct and cost-effective way. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. I am here's from uh, this year's squad, and uh, we'll make sure we get those uh, young men mentioned at some point during during the night. Uh, give you a few right now. Alex Shebley, number two. Jake Knuth, number seven, is a senior. John Raff, number ten. Logan Rigney, number thirteen. Forrest Martinez, number 21. Dakota Gamez, number 24. Benjamin Mills, number 25, my favorite number. Number 30, Ethan Schmidt. Number 32, Taylor Gregory. Uh, Taylor was uh, mentioned in the press, Chris, as uh, being one of the leading receivers in the uh, area. Uh, ben Steen, number 34. Dylan Markels, number 41. Number 42, Devon Kinch. Derek Duby. Number 53, number 59, Matt Fox. Number 63, Alex Torres. Number 74, Joey Cernicke. Number 75, Jeremiah Henderson. Number 76, Derek McLaughlin. And number 82, Tanner Martins. We got them all before the game, Chris. How about that? Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah. Well, Chris mentioned Bayport comes in ranked in the state. They're uh, six and zero. Well, I'm not sure if my my numbers are right here. I've got them for 191 points and only 73 allowed. No. 289 to 96. Okay, 289 to 96. I must have looked too early in the week. 289 to 96. That's uh, number one in points, number two in points allowed, Marty. Colton Peterson is uh, hitting on a 75% clip in terms of uh, his passing. Yep. And uh, Alec Ingold is uh, averaging about seven and a half yards a carry. I got him down for 12 touchdowns. He's uh, yep. been a touchdown machine. Peyton Anderson is their main receiver with 16 catches. Uh, what do you have for Gregory for catches? Well, I had 28 for Peyton Armstrong, and I have Gregory okay. with 15. That puts him fifth in the league. Second in yards behind Armstrong was number one. One thing that uh, Martinez and uh, Gregory do have is great uh, uh, average per catch numbers. Uh, they're way up there. Yep. And uh, Gregory, I've got him for four touchdowns and Martinez yep. for three. Yep. So they've been pretty good in that area also. Yeah. You got Huffman and uh, Boris Ristovoyevich back deep, but it goes to the short man. On the return for uh, South was uh, Alex Feudner. Futsy. Well, South has it in pretty good field position. Chris, they're going to start at first and 10 at the 33. Knuth is uh, fourth in the league, in, or excuse me, fifth in the year. League. league in yards, 37 for 80 this year, seven touchdowns and six INTs. Stead, seven touchdowns puts him third in the league. Wildman is in the backfield with uh, Knuth. Takes a handoff right up the middle. Picks up about four yards. Well, we're going to see Wildman. We're going to see Steen. We're going to see Boris. Ristovoyevich. 
Five yard gain on the play, four yard gain on the play. We'll call it second and six. I still think controlling the ball, Marty, is the key. I agree with you, Chris. I think that was a good point you made in the pregame. You got your job for another week, buddy. <laughs> Knuth under center this time. A pitch out to Ristovojevic. Trying to get through the pile. There were a lot of guys out there, and he didn't get much. Maybe two yards. It's going to be uh, third down and three. As I mentioned, Bayport comes in third in the league in defense. They're fourth against the run, and uh, points allowed is second. They've only allowed 96. This is a big, fast team. Bayport used to be a power, Marty, and they've had a few years off, but they're right back up where they, they used to be. All right, it's only a one-yard gain. It's third and five. Fake handoff. Huffman looking, firing, good pass defense. Knuth was the intended receiver. Playing the pass defense was Derek Shields. I wish that maybe he would have just kept the ball and run there. Trying to squeeze that in there, and unfortunately that means punt. Yeah. Okay. Schmidt was, uh, uh, pardon me, Logan. <laughs> Robert Huffman was quarterback uh, for the entire series, actually. Hess is the uh, fourth leading returner in the uh, league in punt returns. Huffman's uh, punt is high and short. And uh, they do get a friendly bounce, but uh, not nearly the distance they wanted. It's going to be downed on the 39-yard uh, line. Well, good for a 22-23 yard punt, I think, Chris. Not good enough. Some of the guys that were here from that uh, 62 team were uh, number 11, Bill Miller, number 12, Brent Halverson. Of course, we all know Helvey from basketball over the years. We'll give you some more of those names in just a minute. Inside handoff to uh, Ingold. He doesn't get much. Boy, our hands are a little colder, Marty. It's tough to write. It's even tough to talk. Yeah. I know you well, do. I don't have trouble talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we. Uh, weather's definitely changed. Yep, it's a chilly night tonight. Good football night. Not much. Colton Peterson on the handoff. In goal again on the carry. Uh, give him maybe a yard at most. Good defense played up front by the uh, Red Wings. Now let's see what they do with Peterson here. 60 for 79 on the year. He's number one in yards, number one in touchdowns. Got a big wide receiver out here to our side. Steve yeah. Minsloff, number 12. And in the slot is uh, Logan Huffman. Fake handoff. Peterson looking deep down the middle. He's got a wide receiver out there, but threw it too far. Drew Neuville was the intended receiver, but uh, he missed on that pass attempt. Neuville, or Neville there, is the, the, we're calling him. He played on the baseball team. Peterson played on the baseball team. Uh, they lost in the state finals last year to Sun Prairie. Uh, they were a power-ranked basketball team where North went up and beat them, actually, up in their place during the tournament. But uh, Bayport is just a very sports, sports uh, machine. Sports-minded town, huh? Yeah, Neville, you know, that Howard area. Kick is away. Taken on the 21. And uh, ripped down was uh, Emmett Dean. It's going to be first and 10 for the Red Wings at the 26-yard line. Their first possession started on the 33. Ristovojevic and uh, Wildman are in the backfield. 
And it looks like uh, this time it's uh, going to be Knuth. Looks like Knuth, a little taller. Inside handoff, not much for Wildman. A couple yards up to about the 38, 28, pardon me. Here you'll see the replay real quick. Not much of a gain. Second and eight, ball on the 28. Wide to the left for uh, South is Mitchell Martinez. Kristovojevic is the deep back. Forrest Martinez is the up back. And uh, jumping offside was uh, Derek McLaughlin. Hey, you don't know, yardage without giving yourself a five yard penalty. It's gonna be second down, remain second down, but now it's 13. Ball on the 23 yard line, second and 13. Martinez wide to the left again, and Gregory wide right. Knuth trying to fire it, but uh, good pass defense out there. Undercutting the route was uh, Dylan Huss. Huss is third in the league in interceptions. I thought he hit Martinez a little bit early, but uh, I think that's a good no call, Marty. I think you're right. Oh, yeah, I do too. Third down. <coughs> Knuth still in the, uh, at the quarterback position. Go straight back, looking deep. Martinez, well covered, passes way over his head. It's gonna be fourth down. Well, both teams yeah. try uh, long passes, neither are successful. No. <laughs> One thing the uh, line is doing is they're giving uh, a lot of uh, protection. Yes. Looks like we have some technical difficulties with our picture. We'll keep giving you the blow-by-blow -blow report. Good snap. Huffman uh, gets the kick away again. Not a very long one, but he does get a friendly bounce. And it's going to die at the 49 of South. Oh, boy. Now, there is a strong South wind, Marty, so definitely uh, difficult to punt into that wind. He's trying to keep it low, but uh, that didn't work out for him that time. That was about a 26 yarder. I have 26. All righty. First and 10 for the Pirates. Peterson inside handoff and buried behind the line of scrimmage was Brock Broberg. Nothing doing. Tell you, Fox was in there again. We'll give him a no gainer on that. We'll be generous. He lost about a half a yard. They're right back at the line of scrimmage. Max Caesar is uh, the up back. Pass is uh, thrown to Newville. And uh, he can't hang on. It's going to be uh, third down and 10. Yeah, he played some outfield and catcher. Neville is the way they're pronouncing it, Chris, so we'll go with that. Incompletion to him. Big, tall kid. Goes uh, 6'4", 205 pounds. He's a senior. Couple wide receivers off to uh, the right. Peterson, fake handoff. He's getting rushed hard. Pass is incomplete. It was tipped at the line of scrimmage and goes incomplete. Wildman, I think, got a hand on it there, Marty. Yep. How about another punt? Good defense played by the Red Wings so far tonight. I hope they can just get the offense in gear. They'll be in business. Three incompletions already. <laughs> 
He hasn't in completed too many. No, neither neither guy. It's uh, 0 for 6 on the night between the three quarterbacks. I know, but Peterson doesn't incomplete many all season. Right, yeah, hitting on 75%. Punt is away. It's a good one. Taken at about the three-yard line. Good block by Dean. Huffman is going to get it outside the five, and that's it. Only at about the seven-yard line. Probably... Could have let it bounce, Chris, and go hope for it to go into the end zone. Well, that's a situation where you tell the guys, you know. That's why you got two guys back there, right? Well, my point is that you're at the, you don't even go behind the eight-yard line or something like that. If it goes over your head, you let it go. Oh, you know, good they point. started at yeah. three. I mean, you tell them, don't go past the eight or the ten or whatever your rule is. If it goes over your head, you let it. Well, there you caught it on the three, and now you're you're up the creek. Ristovojevic in the backfield with uh, Knuth. Knuth uh, looking for the uh, option, keeps it. He gets it up over the 10 yard line, out to about the 12. Nice little run there by Jake. It's gonna be second down. We're down to 640 in the uh, first quarter. You know, going against a very strong wind. If uh, South can hold the fort here, again, maybe get the wind, but they're gonna have to try to somehow flip the field position, Marty. Yeah, they got to get the ball away from the goal line a little bit. Pick up a four that time. It's okay. going to be second down and six. How about a first down? I hear you. Inside handoff, Ristovoy, uh, pardon me, Wildman had a little bit of an opening, got it up over the 20 yard line. He's got the first down. Yeah, it looked like just a little wildcat action there, Marty. And uh, that's the first down, get him out of that territory. That's a great play. I think it's going to be very difficult to throw into the wind, Marty. A little bit like it was uh, last week over at uh, North. That was out of the North, this one's out of the South. You would think out of the South when it'd be warm, but uh, it's not. Yeah. All right, first and 10 ball on the 21 yard line. Knuth in the backfield. Puts Gregory in motion, hand off to him. Trying to go wide, he cuts it back up and gets it out to the, about the 24 yard line. Uh, the Pirates played pretty good defense on that sweep. Yeah, I like that play, though. I like that play. I just wish you could have turned it up, but I think you're right, Marty. There was just no room for him. Given Gregory, it's going to be a short two yards, but we'll give it to him. Second down and a long eight. <laughs> We're going to stay with the two. Gregory right to the right. Lines are set. Hoffman dropped the ball. He drops it again, drops it again, and fumbles. Doesn't. Oh, boy. Got to pick it up, Chris. Get the ball first before you try to run with it. Robert Huffman trying to do too much and lost the ball. Bayport's going to have it first and goal at the five-yard line. Did we mention the uh, situation about turnovers, Marty? Well, it's one of the things we talked about in the opening. They needed to uh, hang on to the ball. Ingold is uh, in the backfield with uh, Peterson and plan on him getting the ball down here. He's been their touchdown machine looking for the end zone. I think he was stopped just short, but it was a good run off uh, right tackle. Ingold on the carry. It's going to be second and goal. Ball is at the one yard line. Give him a gain of four. How oh, disappointing, Marty. Yeah, really. It's just a deflator. Heading at the north end zone. Bayport second and goal. Ball on the one. They've got uh, Broberg in the backfield with Peterson now. They give it to him up the middle. He pounds into the end zone. Touchdown. They faked to a man going around uh, the end and hand it to Broberg heading right up the middle and he had just enough room. Got it into the end zone for a touchdown. Bayport on top, six to nothing. You know, turnovers are bad enough, Chris, but timing of a turnover is very key also. And uh, the timing of that one was terrible.
in to kick the extra point is Brett Neville. His uh, kick crawls over the upright. It's good. With uh, 4.16 remaining in the first quarter, Bayport up 7 to nothing. Neville kicking off to uh, Ristovojevic and Huffman picked up by Huffman at about the uh, 14 yard line. He's up over the 30, spun off a tackler and gets it up over the 30 to about the 32. Nice little run there by uh, Bob. First and 10 for the Red Wings ball on the 33 yard line. It's been a pretty quick quarter, Chris. Uh, 408 remaining, even given the uh, lack of completed passes. I think it's going to be tough for South to uh, complete passes against this win, Marty. Fake to uh, Gregory. Knuth dragging forward, gets it up over the 35 to about the 37. Another very positive play, Marty. Before they ran that little sweep with Gregory coming through that time, they faked it to him and kept it himself. And I tell you, the uh, South High is moving the ball on Bayport in a very difficult situation with the wind and now trailing 7-0. Second down and five. Ball on about the 38-yard line. Good to see we got a picture again. Huffman, Huffman, Huffman pushing forward. He gets dragged down just short of the 40 yard line. Picks up a couple. Tried to get an option play there, but. Bayport had it covered pretty uh, good. Down to 313. Third down there, you see uh, Wildman in the backfield with uh, Knuth. It's a long three. Fake handoff. Law pass is dropped. Martinez had it right in his hands. No, it wasn't it Martinez. It was, was uh, uh, Markles. Numbers. Markles had it right in his hands and then uh, took his eye off it and uh, dropped it. Uh, yeah, that hurts. Because they had the uh, they needed yardage for a first down. It's going to be fourth down now. South will be forced to punt again. Hoffman. Tough wind. Yeah. Got that one up in the air. It's not going to go anywhere. Kicks up to about the 38, 39 yard line, but they're not going to oh, mark yeah. it there. They're going to mark it up at about the 43, where it was first touched by a South player, make it the 44. Ay, ay, ay. 
So that's about a uh, seven, 16 yard punt. I had 17, but. Whatever. <laughs> it was too short, whatever it is. Wow, it's just, the wind has just knocked that down and got us try to survive here. If I'm Bayport here, I'm airing it out with, with the wind here. Peterson looking. A quick check pass is uh, complete. Spinning off of a tackler is uh, Peyton Armstrong. And you can see why he's a uh, leading receiver. Yeah, he's that's his 29th catch. He is 24th in the state in total yards. Seven TDs, which is just outside the state top 10. And he's obviously number one in the league. But if you know, did you watch him? Uh, if you're watching at home or young people, notice how he had his hands ready to catch the ball and you don't see people do that anymore but he had showed great hands there. 11 yards of first down. Handoff bouncing it out to the outside staying on his feet and gaining a lot of yards was uh, Max Bebel. Bebel on a nice run. It'll be first and 10 again for Bayport. Ball is going to be spotted on the 27 yard line. That's an 18-yard gain. And all of a sudden, they're starting to pick up momentum here. You stopped them twice in a row. You gotta, gotta stay in here now, D. Yeah. There you go. Uh, pretty good defense that time. On the carry was uh, Brock Broberg, who uh, had the touchdown earlier. Good tackle by Wildman. Got about a minute 50 left here. Yeah, give Broberg a one-yard gain. Colton Peterson still at the controls. He has uh, Ingold in the backfield with him. Ingold is their leading rusher. See if he gets the ball. A uh, quick pass and a good hit made by Dean and the pass is incomplete to uh, Minzlaff. Yeah, but again, good hand shown by the uh, Pirate receiver there, but even a better hit by Dean is right, Marty. Third and nine. Thing is in the field position there at Chris, I could see him going for it on uh, fourth down two if they don't get it. Looks like Broberg in the backfield with uh, Peterson. Gotta Quick out is complete and then the ball is jarred loose from Max Caesar. A great hit out there by Wildman, incomplete. I was gonna say that he catch the ball and uh, make a move, but they just call it incomplete. But that's Wildman making back-to-back -back plays, stopping the run, and now stopping that pass there. Great play by Andrew Wildman. All right, and they are gonna go for it on fourth down. Kind of figured with the field position they're in, they might as well in gold alongside uh, Peterson. And now we get a timeout by South. There's a 127 left in the quarter and it's seven to nothing, Bayport. Wow, big play. Yep. I am a Packer fan. And we're Packers fans. Hi, I'm David Collins, superintendent of the Wisconsin State Patrol. Packers fans are the best fans in football. We are the, we are the ultimate, ultimate team players. players. The ultimate team player, be the ultimate team player. Always have a designated driver. Always have a designated driver. Live responsibly. Packer fans. Don't let fans drive drunk. Responsibility has its rewards. Go Packers! Go Packers! Go Packers! Hi, I'm... I want to remind our viewers that at halftime we're going to have members of the uh, 1962 football team come up and we're going to talk a little bit of uh, championship football. That South team uh, finished 8-0 and, oh, and uh, was ranked number one in the state. That was pre-playoff. WIAA. All right, fourth down. Peterson looking, looking, fires a dart over the middle. He's got his receiver and he's knocked down, making the catch that time was Steve Minzlaff. Hey, is Peterson a pitcher? Uh, yep. Play some infield. Played second base last year, but uh, played some shortstop as a sophomore. 18 yard completion, Chris. That was a big one. Yeah, he'll be their, uh, probably their number two pitcher this year. Really? <laughs> Here we go. First and goal at the eight or nine yard line. 
Handoff is to uh, Armstrong, and he takes it in for the score on an end around. But uh, we do have a flag down, Chris is telling me. I think we're going to call this one back. Holding on Bayport. Well, that saves a touchdown. Ball is being marked back to the 17-yard uh, line. It'll be first and goal. Max Caesar in the backfield. Peterson drills it in the middle and hit Schmidt. Wildman right in the numbers, Chris, and he couldn't hang on. If we see a replay of that, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Andrew Wildman, Chris. Ball was uh, not very accurate. Still. 52 seconds left in the quarter. Yeah, all of a sudden that quick quarter is slowing yeah. down, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're throwing, and they might as well. Peterson, got to keep him out. Second and goal, ball on the 17. And here comes Armstrong again, and he's knocked down outside the 20-yard line. Wildman making the solid hit. Did he come to play or what, Marty? Really? Holy cow, he's all over the field so far. Ball on the 21, that's a loss of four yards on the play, Chris. Come on, boys. One time here. Third down, 21. Tell you what. Uh, it marched backwards from the four yard line, eh? We're at the eight, rather. They're gonna roll to the right, Marty, you watch. In gold in the backfield, providing some blocking and dropping him down was Rista Vojevic, jumping over the blocker and making the sack. Wow. Oh, Boris. And that's the end of the first quarter. There see, look at him on the outside. I ah, gotcha. <laughs> He's lucky to keep the ball. Exactly. Television is a powerful and influential medium that allows different groups the opportunity to produce programming that directly affects their own communities. Public, educational, and government access channels ensure that all people, regardless of race, age, gender, disability, religion, or economic status, have access to local government information and the use of a public communication forum. Make sure everyone has a voice. Support your local PEG channels. Sammy and I have high cholesterol. Specifically, Sammy and I have familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH. An inherited genetic disease that causes high cholesterol, often starting in childhood. FH affects more than 600,000 Americans, but often goes undiagnosed, leading to premature heart attack and death. If caught early, FH is treatable. Here we go, fourth down. Peterson back, looking, 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 firing to the end zone. He's got a receiver out there. He makes a catch, and he's in for the score. Unbelievable. How do you have Making guys? Making the catch, Peyton Armstrong. How do you guys have guys in front of that? Uh, how do you let anyone get behind you? Dean. Penalty. Penalty is uh. going to force Bayport back 10 more yards, and South gets a big break. How do you have anybody get behind you? Just stand on the goal line. Well, the other thing, Chris, I mean, you know who the go-to guy is. Maybe you ought to think about double covering that kid. Unbelievable. I still, two penalties brought back touchdowns, Marty, and now they're forced to punt. What a break. Yeah, South uh, definitely got a break. Twice. Kick is away. Into that wind. And uh, it's going to go dead at about the seven yard line. Making the nice punt was uh, Alec Eck. Well, got a break. Let's take advantage. Yeah, of really. Early got that right. 
Early port from Ashwaubenon, on North 7, Ashwaubenon on 0. They're going to mark it. I believe it's a 7 yard line. First down south has been uh, handicapped <laughs> with some terrible field position. Yeah, well, they won against the wind there early. Oh, no. Oh, boy. Ah, jeez. Another timeout. Chris not happy with that timeout. It's the second one of the half by the Red Wings. I mention again at halftime we're going to have members of that 1962 championship South team come on up and we'll talk to them about uh, that 62 season. Also next week our final game of the year in all likelihood uh, we'll have uh, Sheboygan South traveling up to the north side for the north south game. That'll be uh, October 12th, Friday night. Chris, looking at the uh, nice insert in tonight's program yeah, I, in regards to that uh, championship team. I was looking at... Uh, I was at that Oshkosh game. I remember going up there with my brother to see him play. All right, Gregory and Martinez are wide to the left. Knuth in the shotgun. Fake inside handoff. Huffman going deep to Knuth. And good pass defense again made by the Pirates. Pass goes incomplete. Uh, Derek Shiles breaking it up. There you see the replay, and it was a good defensive play. Knuth played tight end his first two years. Moved to quarterback this year, but you have Huffman, who's got a real good arm as well, so you might as well use your athletes and try to put them in their best position to win, and that's what they did there with Huffman. It's going to be second down and 10. South was 0 for 4 in the first quarter, Chris. Now they're 0 for 1 this quarter. Knuth on a keeper. He's got some room. Cuts it back inside and gets it up over the 15-yard line. It's going to be close to the first down. I got to think, Marty, that the uh, yards was pretty much even in that first quarter. It was just that bad turnover, you know, inside the five-yard line that just killed South. Otherwise, this would be a 0-0 belt ball game. Well, the two penalties helped us too. But yeah, exactly. Third down, less than a yard. They hand it to the first back through. Wildman gets nothing. I don't think he's going to have the first down, Chris. Uh, no, he lost two yards, Marty. And the punt team's going to come in. You're right, he did lose two. It's going to be fourth down. And hopefully Huffman can get off a good punt this time. Has time. Nope. Uh, again, get another a short guy. one. And it bounces up to the 45 only. Not much of a kick. They're saying it touched a player that I don't think it'll be spotted at the 40. They're going to move it down towards the end zone for Bayport. Oh boy. You know, the punts are so short, the guys. Uh, don't know where to go. All right, first and uh, first down at the 40-yard uh, line for Bayport. Peterson in the backfield, looking, looking, looking. Pass is complete, but uh, wow. Armstrong is out of bounds. But uh, I'll tell you, they're uh, they're a dynamic contra uh, combination. Oh. I'll tell you that that Armstrong has got some paws. Holy cow! I mean, he's just, you know, he shows his hands like, you know, you're told how to uh -huh. do it. But kids, they don't listen to that because they think <laughs> they know everything. But I'll tell you, he shows those hands and, you know, he sees that ball right into that those paws. And you got Peterson just throwing BBs at him. Second and ten. 
fake handoff. Peterson keeps it. He's a strong strider. He gets tripped up right at the 20 yard line. Otherwise, he'd have been gone. Jake Malkowitz, I think, made the play there. He did, but uh, look at the speed shown by Peterson. Yep. It's going to be a first down at the 20. That's a 20 yard pickup. Longest run of the night for Bayport. You see it again. First down, inside handoff, and getting drilled in the backfield was uh, Max Caesar. Nothing doing there, Chris. Yeah, every time we go to replay, we seem to lose our. Yeah, lose our signal. Yeah. They'll be scrambling in the truck again. Second and 11. In the backfield is uh, Max Beeble with uh, Peterson. He's rolling to the left, throwing. Passes off the mark. Incomplete intended for uh, Mitzlaff. It's going to be third down and 11. South needs to get another stop. There's 9-10 uh, remaining until halftime. South uh, behind 7 to nothing on a one yard run by Brock Broberg. A pass is got almost intercepted, not making the catch was Steve Rodriguez and it was right in his hands. You gotta make that catch. I'll tell you, aye, aye, aye. South gets time after time after time. They have opportunities and they continue to not make plays. And you just can't. Oh, man. All right, big fourth down again. Bayport actually had a touchdown called back by a penalty their last time down here. Armstrong got behind the defender. He's going to get sacked. Knocked down outside the 25 was uh, Colton Peterson. Rodriguez comes back and makes a big play, but I don't know why Peterson just didn't give it to his uh, safety valve on the left. He had a nice wide open uh, running back over there, but held on too long as sometimes high school players do. And a big stoppage and maybe a switch in the field position a little bit for Sheboygan South. That sack went for a five yard loss. South is gonna have it first and 10 ball on the 26 yard line. Ristovoyevich in the backfield. Along with Knuth, here's a pitch back on the uh, option play and uh, Ristovoyevich gets knocked out of bounds at about the 27, not much of a gain there. Going to be second down. Give him a gain of two. Not much, though. Bayport very stingy with their run defense. Second and eight. Huffman passes incomplete. A little too high for uh, Mitchell Martinez. Well. Mention it later. We third and eight. You know, all things considered, Chris Sell certainly hasn't dominated uh, ball possession, and their passing has been uh, not good. But uh, they're only down seven to nothing. Defense has really stepped it up. Martinez is wide to the left. Fake handoff. Oh, Knuth tripped up as he fell over the 25-yard line and uh, looked like he had an opening, but uh, getting tripped up before he could get going. Alrighty, fourth down. Forced to punt again. Huffman has not had a good night punting the ball. 
Got that one away much better. Taken at the 37. And there's a block in the back that this return will get called back. Dylan Huss uh, was the return man. Had a pretty nice return, but there was a definite block in the back. And uh, they're complaining about it, but it's a good call. Jordan Stelzer uh, made the illegal block. I don't know what they're whining about. It's right, the whole planet saw it if you're watching the game. There was a big roar inside the booth here from all the uh, wow. South people. How can you even argue that, kid? Hey, kids know everything, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> Ball is going to be marked all the way back at the 21-yard line. Uh, they would have had the ball up near the 50, so that's like a 29-yard discrepancy or 29-yard penalty in a way. Yeah. In goal has not made much of an impact so far tonight. He's in the backfield. We got our picture back. Inside handoff to him, and he gets dragged down at the 25. Give him a gain of four. In gold on the carry. In gold. Nine. You're welcome, Sim. <laughs> uh, it's tough when you got to announce on TV and be the field announcer at the same time. Fake handoff, Peterson. <laughs> oh, no. Dean, one of the last guys. Peterson runs by him. He's still on his feet down to the 30, down to the 20, and knocked down inside the 15-yard line. Watch him go. Dean is the last guy and he can't get him. Runs right by him, good speed. And gets knocked down. And Martinez are the only guys that could catch him. Yep, it's gonna be a big gainer. Take away that play, Marty, and it's like even here. Sixty-two yards. That's a big one. Peterson, inside handoff. Running back skips by a couple of tacklers. Nice run that time by Max Beeble. Max Beeble with the carry. Five yards on the play. Tackle made by 17, Dylan Pumerow. That's going to bring up a second and five from Mayport. Beeble picks up five. It's going to be second and five. Ball spotted on about the eight yard line. Well, that one hurt, Chris, that long one. He didn't realize that uh, Peterson was that fast of a runner. Maybe he should go out for track instead of baseball. Armstrong in motion, fake handoff to him on a crossing play. They give it to the second back through, actually the third guy, Max Caesar. He didn't get the first down, but he got close. Give him about four yards. It's going to be third down and one. Third and one. Ball's at the four yard line. Oh boy. We need a big play here, Chris. <laughs> Maybe Payport can make another penalty to help. That would out. help, yeah. Whatever. Whatever it takes. Ingold is in the backfield again. He's their touchdown maker. You give it to him off tackle. He's through. He's got the first down. And near the end zone, he's in. In goal, took it in from the 40-yard line for a touchdown. And with uh, 5:05 remaining until halftime, Bayport is now ahead, 13 to nothing. 13th touchdown of the season. Leads the conference in that department. Neville's kick to the upright is through, and Bayport on top, 14 to nothing. Wow, one big play, that's yeah. all they got. <laughs> I mean, South's done so well 
Marty, and it's they're down 14 because of a turnover and a and actually because they couldn't. Well, they forced them to punt on that one where the uh, lineman didn't catch the tip pass. But uh, yeah, you're right. Disappointing. Offense has to get something going. Hopefully, in the last five minutes, they can uh, start to move the ball a little bit. Well, they should have some field position, Marty. Kicking into the wind. Yeah, that should help. Ristovojevic and Hoffman are back deep. We haven't seen uh, Ben Steen tonight. I wonder if he's, uh, he's out. Hurt. Or out for some reason. I think I see him on the sideline. Yep, I do. Next to uh, big number 97, Cody Zimmerman. Six feet, 235 pounds. Neville's gonna do the uh, kickoff chores from the 40 yard line. Hoffman and Ristovojevic are back deep. They're stationed at about the uh, 13, 14 yard line. Kick is a squibber. Picked up, run forward and knocked back was the return man, Paul Brunn. Brunn gets his big opportunity. Did a good job, picked it up and Moved it forward. Well, no, South has field position at the 37. That's a good thing. They got to get something going, though. Yep. Wide receivers left and right. Gregory is down here at the bottom of your screen. Knuth, pitch out to Ristovojevic. Trying to push the pile forward and gets it up to about the 40. Well, gets about three or four yards there. Hoffman in, Knuth out. Second down and about six. Mitchell Martinez at the bottom of your screen now. Huffman on the handoff to Ristovojevic. Leaning forward, he gets it up over the 45. Nice gain there by Boris. Third down. We're going to give it right at the 45. Four more yards. Give him five on that play. Third and one. They got the box stack, Marty. Yeah, a lot of men in the box for Bayport. Again, they give it to uh, Wildman, and he pounds forward to about the 48. Good gain there. Just kind of spun backwards. I don't know if that was the best way place to go, but it worked. First and 10. Three twenty-one and counting, left until halftime. South trying to get something going here. That should be offside. The flag comes out right away, and they stop action. It'll be offside on Bayport. Hey, and we're in uh, Bayport territory. Yeah, only took us what a bunch of time. Twenty minutes. Three thirteen left in the second quarter. All righty, first and five, ball on the 46. Just over three minutes remaining. They've done it all on the ground so far in this uh, possession. Knuth firing out, he's got a receiver complete well. to uh, Wild, Andrew Wildman. Well, number 44. Here you'll see the nice replay, nice ball fake, and nice pitch and catch. Yeah, good pass by Knuth. It's going to be first and ten. Ball 
Ball is down to the uh, 37 yard line. That's a gain of nine on that play. First completion of the uh, half. Huffman on the handoff to uh, Ristovojevic and uh, he gets it back to the original line of scrimmage and that's about it. And that was not much of a gain there, Chris. It's gonna be second and 10, clock running. South has one timeout remaining. Rolling down to the two minute mark. Martinez and Gregory are wide right and left. Wildman in the backfield with uh, Knuth. We haven't called Gregory's name catching balls yet. No. I'm not sure about this. That was a good gain. Gets it inside the uh, 30. Good run. And we got a penalty flag in the middle of the pile. Usually means a hold. And that's exactly what we have on South, a hold. That uh, play will not stand. Ay, 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 ay. That's going to get... Uh, Back to about the 48, Marty. 46, I'm sorry. Yeah, 46. Meanwhile, the clock is running, Marty. Oh, boy. I, they got him. Well, never it's second down and 19. Ay, ay, ay. Knuth slipped by one tackler and uh, dove forward, gets it almost back to the original line of scrimmage. Give him a gain of about eight. Got to be a little more efficient here, Marty. We have a minute 12 rolling. We are <laughs> yeah, there's 37, and they are running the ball. They have one timeout yet. Oh, big play here. Yeah. Third and 10. Clock running under a minute, rolling down to the 52nd mark of the second quarter. Huffman. Gregory. Firing deep to Gregory. Not a good pass. Intercepted inside the 10 yard line. Rainbow pass is not going to do it against their pass defense. Nope, and that's Dylan Huss, who uh, third in the league in interceptions, gets another one. And uh, that number was Dylan Huss. 13. You got it. Oh, yep. Now well, let's see what uh, Bayport does if they're going to. Uh, uh, no. You'd think they would just kneel her down, eh? Uh, I would think so. I'm going to give it to uh, Bayport at the seven yard line. They're up 14 to nothing, 39 seconds remaining. Peterson is in the shotgun, though, Chris. Fake handoff. He goes through, gets it up to the 14. He's looking to pick up some yards. Looking for that big gainer again. He had a 62 yarder earlier. It's going to be second down. 69, 79, 89, 84 yards in the second quarter. And that's in four carries, Chris. They're going to let it run out. And uh, that's halftime. Bayport on top, 14 to nothing. I am Sammy and I have high cholesterol. Specifically, Sammy and I have familial hypercholesterolemia. Six hundred thousand Americans, but often get put on the line and uh, talk to some of these guys. I'm going to start off with uh, Steve Freilich. Steve, come on down here, please. And uh, 
Stewart. Stewart was talking about what he remembers most about the 62 team. Well, I remember the, uh, the hamburger squad, or in other words, the second and the third string, and how we, uh, we had a practice every night against the best team in the, in the state. And uh, we had our bumps and bruises. That's why we all looked like hamburger by the, <laughs> by the time the season was half over. But I think we were so deep on that team. We had outstanding running backs and and uh, a tremendous lineman. And uh, and the attitude uh, was always a happy attitude. And uh, uh, it was a good bunch of fellas. Okay, Stuart, thank you very much. We'll jump over to this side. Tony Cupboard. How do you say that? Is it Cupboard or Cupboard? Cupboard. That's what I thought too. Tony, what do you remember most about the team? Well, I really think that uh, even like nowadays we still stay in touch, very close uh, group. A lot of us played uh, basketball together ever since we knew each other ever since we were in sixth grade. So I think that was a big thing of being so close. Uh, a lot of rivalries with that. Uh, season and we're eight and oh. A lot of rivalries within your group, though, with that eighth grade eighth grade basketball in the, at the Catholic school level. Oh yeah, we had uh, John at uh, St. Clements, St. Zero, and uh, at St. Clements, and we had Trappin at St. Peter Claver, and me and Holy Name, and you know, stuck together quite a bit, pretty good, so we knew each other quite well. John, what do you remember most about the uh, '62 football team? I would think the big game for us was, uh, for me anyway, was against Green Bay West, and they were. Supposedly supposed to be the big guns in the league, and uh, we ended up beating them 43 to nothing. Halby, you had something else to add to that uh, West game. Oh, you mean uh, the homecoming? Yeah. Oh, well, what we were supposed to be doing was we were supposed to have our homecoming game against Fond Lac, but we didn't want to play Fond Lac. We wanted to play West for our homecoming game. So they switched it. So. It was, it was an exciting game. Uh, we enjoyed it, and uh, what what uh, what amazes me is because we had a melting pot of guys here. We had guys from parochial schools, we had guys from public schools, put us all together, and that's what we got. So, not not a bad squad, huh? You know? Yeah, we we had fun. We had fun. We enjoyed it. Steve Leiterman, what do you remember most about the team? Uh, the thing I remember most about the team is that the guys were always there, and. We went, we went to practice every day, and we worked hard, and uh, good things came out at the game. It seems like we could have worked harder or, or done more, but we gave what we had, and it made it fun. All right, great. Billy Miller, step up to the mic. What do you remember most about the uh, 62 squad? How hard people practiced, how hard they played. When they got on the field, it was business only. It was a lot of fooling around in the locker rooms after, but when the game started, everybody did their job as best they could. Mark, you want to step down here, please? Come on down. Come on down. Come on down. Come on. We got to talk about that Simon family. A lot of good athletes. What do you remember most about that 62 squad, though, Mark? Well, that was a hard-working team. Is extremely talented, but worked together. It was just uh, the right combination on the team. There were skilled players. There were tough guys out on the play on the field, and there were a number of true leaders that kept everybody going. Who were some of those leaders? Uh, Gary Campen was a quarterback, and, and he was just a, a great athlete. Uh, Johnson Ellis was great in the line. And if somebody did make a mistake, uh, the rest of them wouldn't climb on his back, but they would let him know. And uh, you played for each other. A very unselfish group of individuals. One of the things we did was uh, talk a little bit before we went on air, and, and we talked a little bit about your head coach, Andy Anderson. Say a word about him. Andy Anderson was a tremendous coach. Uh, he could motivate, he could get the team up, and uh, he just knew how to connect with young people. And never belittled anybody, but knew the right way to handle them. And I was very fortunate that as I went into my career, I had a chance to work with Andy a little bit. He became the athletic director at Stevens Point High School. And uh, we were able to reminisce several times on the team and how much he uh, appreciated the chance to coach uh, that caliber of high school athlete because it was a very uh, talented uh, team that coaches just hope to have. Thanks for stepping up to the mic. I really appreciate it. And thanks to all you guys for coming up here and waiting through this. And uh, if nothing else, you stayed warmer up here than out in the stands. <laughs> Yeah, thanks again, and uh, congratulations on a great season. I got a lot of memories because I went and watched you guys play, and I remember that. Thanks.
Thanks for having us. Man. You guys You're welcome. Sure. I was going to tell you. Do the second half kickoff. 36 or 37 yard line. No penalty flags down. It's going to be first down and 10. Ball at the 36. 24 yard run for Ingold. His longest rush of the night. Didn't do much in that first half, Chris. Another inside handoff, this time to uh, Broberg. Brock Broberg picks up a pretty good yardage on his carry. Give him a five yard, five yard run. Chris are starting to pile up yards. This is not good. Peterson in the backfield, that quarterback. He's been in the shotgun most of the night. Quick out to Armstrong, and <laughs> Chris, he had his hands up, but he ran before he caught it. Yep, you don't see that very often at all. Uh, some of the Bayport people are watching our broadcast, and I said he's been in the shotgun most of the night. I think he's been in the shotgun every single play on offense. <laughs> So an understatement on my part, I stand corrected. <laughs> in gold in the backfield. Oh, he makes a great pitch and catch, and Armstrong slips by one tackler, slips by another, and he dances into the end zone. Nice touchdown play there, 20, 36 yarder. Should have been stopped for. 31 yarder actually. Short of the first down, but a missed tackle. Oh boy. Yep, I hear your, I feel your pain. 31 yard touchdown pass. Peterson to Armstrong. Yeah, too easy there, Chris. Oh boy. Neville, kick to the upright is through. With uh, 10.56 remaining in the third quarter, it's 21 to nothing, Bayport. It wouldn't be so bad, but uh, Saul's offense has been pretty much non-existent. Well, they had something going there at the end of the uh, yeah, half. Yeah, the first half. just got the penalty that didn't it, help the situation. You know, we had trouble with our uh, connection uh, at halftime. I mean, you know, we spent a good 15 minutes up here. And, but it gave me a chance to go down the line and just ask, them, ask the guys a real simple question. What do you remember most about it? And uh, I think it gave them a chance to think a little bit. And then when we finally did get on, asked them the same question. And... Uh, Answers pretty much stayed the same, but uh, they're a great group of guys. Oh, what a what a blessing! Yeah, some good insights too. They um, apparently moved their homecoming game so they could play it against West because West, at the time, as we know from you know, or was supposed to be one of the top teams in the conference, and uh, South beat them forty-three to nothing. <laughs> By the way, were you watching? You watched North the uh, the Wisconsin Nebraska game. I saw very little, Marty. Okay, they had a, a question. What quarterback from Green Bay started for Nebraska? Oh, yeah, I know that one. What is it? Is that, don't tell me. <laughs> he actually got his picture on the cover of Sports Illustrated when yeah, they won the national yeah, championship. I know it is. He's a, he was the quarterback of West when I uh, was in high school. We played against him. It wasn't Taggy, was it? No. You got it, Jerry Taggy. And he also had another guy, I think who played at Nebraska, was uh, Mason, Dave Mason. Also went to West and played at Nebraska. All righty, 21 to nothing, Bayport. South, their first play of the second half. Pitch back to Aristovoyevich, and he gets knocked down at the 25. A great tackle out on the wing by Adam Boyce. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back the voice of the Red Wings, Sim Sapper. Oh, 
I'll tell you, the guys below us, even though South is down by three scores, are having a good time. Phil Risto doing double duty for a little bit while uh, Sim was off. Knuth puts uh, Gregory in motion. Fake handoff to him. And uh, Jake a little too anxious to run with the ball, and he fell down right at the line of scrimmage. And it looked like he had some room to run, Chris, but uh, I'll take it one play, one thing at a time. It's going to be third down and 13. Again, uh, South uh, stalling out on offense. And we get a penalty flag down before uh, the 20 ball guys is in the huddle. Sometimes I think it's lining up offside. No, I think. It's going to be on south. Coach Hine uh, talking to the uh, lead official. Are they going to pick it up? Yep. Illegal nope. substitution yep. on south, which could mean 12 guys in the huddle. So a penalty on the uh, south siders. Ball's on the 29.09 remaining in the third quarter. Martinez and Gregory are your wideouts. A quick out to uh, Martinez. He makes the catch, but uh, well short of the first down. Got it to the 25. It's going to be fourth down. Chris, I think that's the first completion of the night. Really? Really? No, I take that back. It's her second. Wildman had a nine-yard completion yep. for a first down yep. in the, in the second quarter. Yep. I stand corrected. Oh, penalty in the middle of the line. Illegal procedure on uh, South. Wildman. Uh, wow. Now South did a good job in the first half, Chris, and not getting many penalties. It was actually uh, Bayport that helped uh, South out several times, but uh, this half has not had a good start for uh, the Red Wings in terms of penalties. Yeah. Oh, boy. Time out for South. I know you're a little disgruntled in the first half with the timeouts they took, when they took them, but in reality it didn't hurt them at all. No. What's interesting is we don't have a picture, but I don't know if we have sound or not. Yeah, they do. They do? Yep. That's what happened last week. <clears throat> Back deep to receive the punt is uh, Dylan Huss. Huffman has had a rough night punting the ball. Huss is actually in South territory. Now he backs up to the 50 yard line. Kick is away. This one pretty good actually. Taken by Huss on the 29 yard line. It's gonna be first and 10 Bayport from the 49 yard line of South. be a 29 yard punt Chris but it is against the wind as you mentioned quick snap uh, Peterson keeps it gets it up or down to the 45 yard line Gain of four. Carry tackle made by number 17, Dylan Comoro. Four yard gain on the play, second and six. Holy 
Second down for the Pirates. They're up 21 to nothing. Inside handoff. Not going far was the ball carrier Max Beeble. 17-30 Third down. Beeble picks up about two on the play. It's going to be third down. Third down. Inside handoff to uh, Ingold. He struggles forward. I think he's going to be just short of the first down. But a nice run by that young man. Real close, Marty. Well, Chris, we haven't done this all year. Oh, what are you going to guess? <laughs> first down? <laughs> All righty, first and 10, Bayport on the 38-yard line. Ingold uh, gets the inside handoff, and he stumbles as he uh, falls over the uh, line of scrimmage, gets maybe one. Second down and nine. All right, second and nine. Peterson in the backfield. He's been at quarterback all night. Quick strike. He's got his wide receiver, Mintzloff, and uh, he's knocked down at about the 31. Give him a gain of six yards on the play. Third down and about three. Uh, Peterson's starting to get his sea legs, Chris, in terms of his passing. He didn't have a good start, that's for sure. And false start by Bayport. That might change the play call, Chris. It's going to be third and eight now. Next week we'll be up on the north side when uh, South travels up to uh, Urban Field to play North in the annual North-South game. Uh, South was leading, uh, pardon me, North was leading in their game tonight. They've uh, certainly picked it up the last couple weeks, Chris. They've been playing better. Should be an interesting game next week. Peterson. Fires over uh -oh. the middle. He's got his wide receiver making uh -oh. a catch was Neville, and he's into the end zone touchdown. That was pretty easy, Chris. Neville makes the catch, goes 36 yards for the touchdown. Another big play on the passing game. Boy, Bayport oh scores their second third quarter touchdown, and this time it goes 36 yards. Had a 31 yarder earlier. Neville. Now let's get Drew Neville on the touchdown. Brett Neville is going to kick the extra point. You get those boys straight. Neville drives it through the uprights. It's good. And uh, that makes it 28 to nothing with uh, 5.02 remaining in the third quarter. All right, 50 50 raffle ticket holders. Let's go. Winning ticket 707535. 707535. Come to the press box if you want $192. Well, Chris, if they don't pick it up, I think it's yours. <laughs> Do you have to have a winning ticket to get the money?
Well, back deep to receive the kickoff are uh, Robert Huffman and Boris Ristovoyevic. And uh, we see Ben Steen down on the sideline. He's uh, not in uniform. He is wearing his jersey, but uh, he's not in uniform. Uh, so he's definitely out for tonight. Chris mentioned that earlier. Uh, kick is not a very deep one. It goes out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And uh, that'll be a penalty. South will get it in great field position. First and 10 for uh, the Red Wings, ball on the 35 yard line. Let's see if they can get something going, Chris. At least get off to Schneid. It's 28 to nothing, or your screen is wrong. <laughs> Carry. <laughs> I think he's got enough problems. Yeah, really. Well, I'll give him one more. There we go. <laughs> oh, not much going there. Making his first carry was Alex Shibley. Welcome to the ball game, Alex. Loses four. Second down. Oh. Gregory is wide to the right. Martinez is wide left. Knuth in the shotgun. They're going to do an end around with uh, Gregory, and there's nobody home on the other side. Martinez gives him a block. He's got the first down. He's down to the 20. 10, 5, touchdown, Sheboygan South. Gregory on a 76. 65 yard run. No way. There's a hanky way back at the 20. There's a flag on the play. Yeah, boy, I wish we had the replay now, Chris, to see what happened. Ay, 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 ay. Come on, guys. Jeez. All right, that is a fail of the frag ball. It was, I don't know how there could be any holding. There was nobody there. <laughs> no, and they built a wall. Yeah, they had all kinds of blockers so they had, on that they side. They didn't do anything. Please come to the press uh. box to receive yeah. 192. That is bad. They're all going under the bleachers to play. Adam, Adam. Uh, remain second down. They actually pick up a couple of yards because uh, where the penalty occurred. It's going to be uh, second down and 12. Ball is at the 33. I guess you give uh, Gregory a couple of yards on the play, huh? Instead of having about 55, he gets two. And this time they run the uh, option, and Boris gets uh, cartwheeled at the 35. Spun down. Nice hit up there by number 47, Alex. Think about the time uh, Kyle Orton got uh, helicoptered in that Badger game, probably cost him the Heisman Trophy when he fumbled the ball. That's what Boris looked like. Third down and 10. I'll give you a visual when you don't have a picture. <laughs> of course, you got to be a true fan. And from how many years ago was that, Cray? Orton's been in the NFL for a number of years now. Taking it right up the middle uh, is not going to be nearly close enough as Jake Knuth. He picks up maybe four, four yards will give him. It's going to be fourth down and six. Bring up a fourth and six. And it's uh, time out by South. What do you do now? You punt it away again or try to go for it? That's uh, what uh, Coach Hine is going to talk about in the huddle. Probably go for it. 
What do you have to lose? You're down by four scores anyways. Second time out by uh, South. You have one minute to report. One minute. Let's go through some of the scores from that 62 team. They started the season beating Kenosha 12-7. to then they went up to Oshkosh and played that game. I remember being there, Chris. They, they beat Oshkosh, which was a very tough squad, 19-13. to They shut out Appleton, 19 to nothing. Uh, squeaked by Manitowoc, 6 to nothing. Manitowoc, again, has a pretty good history of strong football, even way back pre-Rubeck uh, years. Uh, they beat East, 27-7. to Fond du Lac, 35-6. Uh, West, we had mentioned, was the homecoming game. They won that game 43 to nothing. West was uh, actually favored, apparently. And then they uh, doubled up their crosstown rivals, Shebaigan North, 28 to 14. Uh, one kudos for North as they did score more than anybody else that year against uh, South. But uh, South finished undefeated, number one in the state that year. Knuth going deep. And intercepted again, making the interception for uh, the Bayport Pirates was Dylan Huss, number 13. Let's see, I think, uh, yep, that's the second interception for, for Dylan Huss. Bayport's got it. Probably better than a punt, Chris. <laughs> Ball is on the 35-yard line. There he goes. Peterson is knocked out of bounds, but you can see it right in front of us. The uh, wide receiver, Steve Minzlaff, uh, did an out and up. But uh, Peterson didn't quite have the time, and then he took off and ran with it and picked up a lot of yards. And he can run. Yeah, he's a he's a long strider, actually. I think. Fifteen, eighteen-yard run. They've done a lot on the ground, Chris. In gold, bouncing it outside, but uh, gets knocked down at about the uh, 45. Give him a gain of two. Not much there. You know, at times, I think uh, South's run defense has looked pretty good. What's going to skew the stats is that long run by Peterson that I think would have had 62, 62 yards. Yep. That's going to hurt. But otherwise, uh, in gold has uh, not done a whole lot tonight. Armstrong in motion, hand it off to him. Tries to cut it back up and uh, picks up maybe two or three. The jet sweep, right? Send a yep. wide receiver in motion. Yep. That was the jet sweep. Not much there. Ball spotted at the 43-yard line. Peterson fakes the handoff, rolling to the right, tucks it in and runs for the first down. He's battered down at the 35 of South. He's just so fast, Marty. Yeah, he's a uh, quick acceleration. I mean, and then once he gets going, he's, uh, like you said, has good speed. First and 10. Ball on the 35-yard line. Bayport comes out. They've got wide receivers left and right. Armstrong is uh, on the right side. Inside handoff to Broberg, and he's knocked down after a short gain. It's going to be second down. Only a pickup of two by Broberg. Chris is bummed out. No picture. He wants to get on TV. <laughs> and there are going to be no interviews after this one either, it doesn't look like. So he'll be cooped up here with me. <laughs> Could be worse, but not much. Fake handoff. In gold. In the uh, Wildcat. Wildcat. Keeps it. Gets close to a first down. It's going to be third down. 
He picks up seven on that play. It's going to be third and one. Ingold's just a sophomore, Marty. Really? Jeez. I didn't notice that on the sheet. Quarterback, running back, 10th grader, 190, according to this. He's still in there. Hands it off. Uh, picking up the first down was Max Beeble. Quarter, Marty. Number 25, and that's the end of the third quarter. Or, well, not quite. They stopped the clock to uh, reset the chains, but uh, ball is spotted on about the 22. And uh, I think the clock will run out. That is the quarter. Chris is right. At the end of three quarters of play, Bayport 28, South nothing. I am Sammy and I have high cholesterol. Specifically, Sammy and I have familial hypercholesterolemia, or FH. An inherited genetic disease that causes high cholesterol, often starting in childhood. FH affects more than 600,000 Americans, but often goes undiagnosed, leading to premature heart attack and death. If caught early, FH is treatable. Do you know if high cholesterol runs in your family? See a doctor and get screened. For more information, visit www.learnyourlipids.com. In Wisconsin, the laws are the same for bicyclists and motorists. So if you bike, ride with the traffic and obey stop signs and lights. Whether you ride a bike or drive a car, you must yield the right-of-way to pedestrians at marked and unmarked crosswalks. At intersections, always look for pedestrians before making a turn. And slow down in school zones and neighborhoods to keep our kids safe. Share and be aware. We're all responsible. Five carries for a no yards by South. Wow. There you go, Marty. And he had five yards passing. Hand off to uh, Beeble. Gets around the end. He's going to get through the line of scrimmage and get it down to about the 10 yard line. It'll be a first down. Just wearing out uh, South, Marty. Yep, they're, they've got possession of the ball. South's defense is not able to get off the field. It's going to be first and goal ball on the 10. 12 yard pickup on that play by uh, Beeble. Ingold is the quarterback. He's uh, been back there the last few plays. Inside handoff, the running back doesn't get much. The running back was uh, Brock Broberg. Uh, check that, I believe it was number 27, Daniel Soderlund. We'll give the carry to Soderlund. It's gonna be second and goal. Nothing on the gain. For Soderberg. Again, in gold, the 10th grader is at quarterback now. And this time it's uh, number 21, Broberg. Not much there. Give him a maybe two yards at the most. We'll be generous and give them two. Ball spotted on around the eight. It's third down. In goal at quarterback again. Also in the back with him is 25, Max Beeble. Fake. Yeah, they do hand it off to Beeble, and he's through the line of scrimmage, getting near the end zone. They claim there's a fumble, and South recovers. Oh boy. Matt Fox on the recovery. Let's see where they're going to spot the ball. It's uh, near the goal line. Call it about the uh, two or three yard line. We'll call it the two. But uh, South uh, prevents Bayport from getting in. It'll be first and 10 for the Red Wings. Gregory wide left. Martinez wide right. Knuth at quarterback. Inside handoff to Wildman. He gets it up to about the six. 
going to be second down. Give him a three yard pickup. Oh, not much action from uh, South's offense, Chris. It looked like they had a touchdown on that Gregory reverse, but that was called back. That was uh, the most exciting play of the night. And, uh, timeout South, Chris Hine walking out to uh, the huddle. And uh, that should be their last timeout, Chris. It is. It is their last timeout. Marty, I wanted to mention some something kind of interesting about this 62 team. I know you keep mentioning it all night. But I'm looking at the... Uh, the numbers, yep. If you look at the first few players 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, they're all halfbacks. There's just a quarterback, a halfback, quarterback, quarterback. Then at the 30s, it's all fullbacks. Then you go to the 40s, it's all halfbacks. 50 and 51 were your centers. And 52, your 60s were all guards. Your 70s were all tackles. <laughs> and 80s and above were all ends. <laughs> That's how you did it back then. Yeah, yeah it did. <laughs> no, th and there's no single digit numbers there's on There's no that. single digits, Start with and all the players at their position are together. <laughs> Interesting, and, huh? Yeah, and it's not like today where it's linebacker slash right. offensive linemen right. or whatever. Only it's listing their offensive, offensive position. Yeah. Correct. But then, too, on defense, you had tackles and ends and, mm -hmm. you know, backers, I guess they were called before, right. linebackers. Right. And, you know, your halfbacks were kind of like your D-backs or whatever. But they were called halfbacks back then. Knuth hands it off. And uh, we didn't catch who the running back was. Forrest Martinez, I believe, was the ball carrier. No, it's Boris, I think. Oh, it could have been Forrest, you're right. Eh, we'll give it to him. He isn't. We didn't call his number much. Nothing uh, doing on that carry. Third and seven yet. Forrest with a no gainer. Knuth under center. Wide open, Wildman. Wildman. Oh, he gets it out to about the uh, 15 yard line. I didn't, did he throw a pass, Chris? Yeah. Wow, I was totally fooled. Threw back across the field. Wildman with his second catch of the night for the first down. It's about a 10 yard pickup. We'll get called at the 14 yard line. It'll be a nine yard pickup. That's the uh, second nine yard completion to uh, Wildman. He had one back in the second quarter, a nine yard completion from uh, Knuth. Boris trying to get to the outside and then cuts it back up into the traffic but gets it out to about the 18 yard line. Boris Ristovoyevich. Give him a gain of four. Second down. Knuth under center. Wide receivers left and right again. Pitch out. Shibley throwing deep to Gregory. He's got it. And he's knocked down at about the 48 yard ball line. Out. Oh, ball came out. He had it and dropped it. Well, South pulling out all the stops. They're showing North a lot to look for next week, huh? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, third down. as I'm watching this game, Marty, uh, I don't know if Bayport's the best in the league. I was looking at their schedule. They haven't played Manitowoc. <laughs> they haven't played Preble. They haven't played Southwest. They get Southwest next week. But uh, I hear you. Sal's defense really played good. Knuth out, out to the 30. Over the 35 and is knocked out of bounds at about the 37 or 38 yard line. Good run by Jake. Nice run is for sure. But one thing about Bayport is they are really fast. I mean, they're not big, but they are really fast. And, you know, they... Uh, 21 yard pickup there by Knuth. The longest play of the night for uh, South. I don't know, Kerry. Be careful about running those replays, man. <laughs> 
We're not always bouncing back to a picture after those inside, inside handoff to Wildman. Uh, jukes and jives and gets it out over the 40. Put a little quick play. Give Wildman a pick up a three. Yeah, big game next week will be Bayport at Southwest. And uh, that'll be probably solve one of the... The other game will be Preble against East. Knuth has Martinez deep under throws and a good job of playing pass defense by uh, Brennan Warner who knocked the ball away. And Preble and Southwest are playing tonight so one of those two teams will get knocked off as well. I'll tell you what, you know, that's a smart football team. Why give up the long pass? You know, don't let anybody get behind us. You know, and that's what Bayport's doing. And with their speed, it's easy to take care of that. Wildman and uh, Ristovojevic in the backfield behind uh, Jake Knuth. Gregory in the slot on the right side. Fake handoff. A throwback to Ristovojevic. Uh, Bayport actually doing a great job of defending that. Ristovojevic makes the catch and uh, gains maybe a yard. A lot of action for one yard, Chris. While well, he went back into the flow instead of going to the outside and using his blockers. And like you said in the play, Marty, Bayport kind of forced him to go that way. And uh, he went that way. Fourth and six, South going for it. Nothing to lose. Wildman in the backfield. Ristovojevic in the slot on the left side. Martinez at the bottom of your screen. Knuth rushed hard. Pass is caught by Martinez. And he's inside the 40-yard line. Good pitch and catch there. First and 10 for the Red Wings, ball on the 38. Too bad they had to start this, uh, start this uh, drive on the four. 19 yard pickup, Chris. I don't like that. Lines are set. Oh, pitch back to Wildman. He's gotta get it. And he just barely got it back. That uh, Bayport player was in there lickety split, but uh, not quite soon enough. I believe that was Zach Stadler who got there a little bit late, but a big loss on that uh, option play. Ball is all the way back in South Territory at the 47 yard line. 15 yard loss. Jeez. Knuth, throw back to Ristovojevic. He gets by the first tackler, but uh, can't get much. He loses more yardage. Up at Ash, My up friend Glenn Hilpertshauser always had a good point. You know, it's second down, 25 yards to go. You think they're going to bite on a run fake? <laughs> What's the point? Because that's how we practice, and we practice, and we practice, so we'll run it again. Uh, I was going to say, up at the uh, start of the fourth quarter, Ash Wabin on 17, north 7. It's third down, and a bunch. And a reverse to Gregory. He's got some room to run. And uh, he's a penalty. I think they're going to get on Sportsmanlike or uh, a personal follow on uh, Bayport hitting out of bounds. And that might be enough for the first down. Gregory was uh, way short. There you'll see it. Yep. Watch the hit out of bounds. Out. And another guy goes after him. Uh. 
First and ten, Red Wings at the 25. Give Gregory about a uh, 23 yard run, I believe that was, Chris, not 13. Could be a touchdown. Uh, cuts it back up way. the middle. Yeah, I should have bounced it to the outside. He had a blocker. Uh, but Knuth uh, on again, another nice run. First and 10, ball spotted on the 12-yard uh, line, a 13-yard pickup again. The final decision on that Gregory run was 13 yards. Lines are set, inside handoff to Martinez, and he gets pushed back. We're down to 346, Marty. This it started at the 10 18 mark. Well, on look the at floor. all the red things. This has been a long drive for South. Yeah. It started at the 10 18. We're looking at a seven minute drive. The only problem is you're down by four scores. And I guess it's something to get a score. Two yard pickup by Forrest Martinez. Wildman in the backfield with Knuth. Fake handoff, Knuth keeps it, he's got a blocker out there, and he's in for the touchdown. Making a good block on the wing for the Red Wings was John Sullivan. He buried that uh, that uh, Bayport player. And South is on the board. Here you'll see the replay, Knuth. Just a nice little simple keeper for 10 yards. Kind of the same play they ran before. You know, he's had uh, a good night running the ball, Chris. Huffman is going to attempt the extra point. Right now it's 28-6. to six. Good snap, bad kick. He peaked. I do that on a golf course every once in a while. But the 10 yard run by uh, Jake Knuth gets uh, South on the board here in the fourth quarter. And uh, I was just going to say to perk Chris up a little bit. He's bummed out about tonight's ball game. But think about it this way, Chris. Next week you will be doing some interviews. Yep, that's a good thing. And like I said, I'm not exactly I think that Bayport is the best team in the league. I know they're undefeated, but as I said, they didn't play three of the big dogs. A little bit of a soft schedule. Yeah, and you don't play Manitowoc, Preble, and you catch Southwest last. Uh, I, I just thought Southwest was a better football team. I've seen them, and Preble is uh, just a machine. And uh, Southwest Preble playing tonight, and Bayport and Southwest will be playing for if South win, South win, West wins tonight. They could play win the outright title next week by beating Bayport. Or if Bayport wins tonight, well, Bayport me, will uh, win tonight. Excuse me. Uh, if Preble wins tonight, then uh, there could be uh, two teams tied. If Bayport wins next week against Southwest, but uh, Ooh, high snap uh, handoff, the running back is going nowhere. Stopped right at the 30. He's going to actually lose yardage. Martinez on the tackle and on the carry was uh, Beeble. We're down to 2:47. Well, not a good night for uh, the Southsiders. They just couldn't get anything going on offense. The defense was uh, played very, very well in the first half. Uh, punt, punt, fumble, punt, yeah, punt, and, well, punt. They all seem to be punt, in bad seven. position. Yep. 
in field position, I mean, Ingold uh, keeps it, and uh, he's going to get a first down. Nice run by uh, Alec Ingold. I don't know why he's in the game. <laughs> well, they got him at quarterback. He's not the running. He didn't get many carries during the course of the game, no, actually. I know, but that's... Uh, he did have five in the third quarter. Do you want your uh, three number one the, back getting hurt with uh, two minutes left with the conference championship well, on the line next week? Yeah, I don't think point so. there. Not by, up by 22 points. I'm sure somebody else can carry the, the pumpkin. Carry the rock, right? The pumpkin besides you. It's third down. Inside handoff. Running back has the first down. He's knocked down at about the 20, at the 45 rather. And now they're just about that they can just take a knee here. South has no more timeouts. And uh, tell you, just show the last drive for the you know your film tomorrow morning of what you can do, South, and uh, go off of that. I didn't think the defense played that poorly today. No. And if nothing else, they've. Uh, did some of their trick plays give North a little bit more of something to think of? Uh, Soderlund again on the carry. Let me second down and about five. This Broberg. Who carried the ball, Marty? Soderlund, 27, is down. He uh, had a carrier carry earlier in the quarter for no gain, and now he's carried the ball the last two times for five yards each. Why don't you just take a knee? <laughs> <laughs> there is uh, 141 left in the ball game. Sometimes I just wonder. You know. I well, I I can see what they're doing. You know, he got he hasn't played much tonight. You know, get yeah. him some carries. You yeah. know, just unfortunately he got hurt. Right. Uh, and True. again, uh, you never know when Ingold will have to come in and play some meaningful minutes. We get him at quarterback. He hasn't run the ball a whole lot this quarter. Even though he's been at quarterback, he's been mostly handing it off. Uh, Maggie Bauer coming out to add some uh, expertise to the situation. And you see her. We had mentioned this a couple times. Oh, look at that. Don't break the camera, Eric. <laughs> We'll be at North next week. Uh, that'll be our final game of the year. Uh, Want a fast year? Yeah, it was a fast year again. And uh, pass on some kudos to uh, that uh, 62 squad undefeated. And uh, again, thank you to those fellows for coming up here and uh, letting us interview them during the band concert. I know the band guys may not be too happy with us, but. Uh, They'll be back on the field next year. Those old guys, they won't be back on the field again. All righty. Second and five. In gold is a uh, no, new quarterback this time. Getting knocked down was uh, Broberg. Playing quarterback was uh, Colton Huff, number 30. It's going to be third down. A loss of two on the play by... Uh, Broberg. The Pirates, Third down and seven. You know, you talk about your numbers all being in order, you know, and, and all that kind of stuff. We got a quarterback that's number 30. We got a quarterback <laughs> that's number nine. We got a quarterback that's number 19. Yeah. We got wide receivers, 12, 11, and 17. Timeout, Bayport. They want to get this play right. Well, we didn't even mention a crew tonight yet. Kerry Kautzer has uh, really been scrambling in the truck with all the technical difficulty. He's our director. Eric Wiesman is the uh, field cameraman. And uh, Richard Bartson is our uh, top cameraman. He's uh, up there in the elements. It's uh, pretty cold tonight. Nobody envies him up there, but uh, doing a great job. Those guys providing some great pictures and uh, working through the issues we've had tonight. My partner is Chris Wright. I'm Mike Martin, the play-by-play -play guy. And uh, we always enjoy bringing these games to you guys, and we know we appreciate you appreciate it. 17-7, Ashwaubenon. Chris relaying the score of the North game. 
They start the fourth quarter at 17 to seven. Of course, you'll know that when you watch this game tomorrow morning. All righty, we got some new numbers out there, Chris. Jordan Lindgren is the uh, wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. And uh, getting tripped up. He had room to run, but Colton Huff got tripped up by one of his own players and uh, didn't gain much. Well, it's yeah. going to be uh, Southwest and uh, Bayport. Looks like Southwest is clobbering. Preble tonight. So, Marty, you have a chance to be right. I pick Preble, you pick Southwest. So Really? I thought Bayport would be maybe third with Mantuak and... Uh -huh. You know, it's in, in some respects, it is a little harder now to pick because of the, you know, who draws the tougher Correct. or easier schedule. I even, I even looked at that, and I said that Bayport had a really easy <laughs> I didn't rough. get that technical. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm nuts. Yeah, that's all right. There's something to be said about winning. Yeah, I looked, all the, I looked up all that stuff way back in August. Huffman uh, takes it at the 16 and gets knocked back at the 16. Bayport. And that was the final play of the ball game. Bayport wins it, goes to 7-0, and a 28-6 win over South. South drops to uh, 2 and uh, 5. They will not be going to the playoffs, and neither will North, and uh, they'll be playing them next week. Uh, Chris, uh, why don't you offer a few comments, and then uh, we'll wrap this ball game up. Well, as I mentioned before, I thought the defense did a real nice job tonight. I thought... They really stopped Bayport at, at first, and I thought that, you know, you couldn't ask much for that, but the uh, early turnover inside the five-yard line set the tone, and, you know, then the field position was just swapped over to Bayport. It always seemed like it was down here, and uh, north end, that is, and just not enough offense like you mentioned, Marty, and I just like the last drive, and hopefully it can do that next week against North. All righty, with that, uh, we're going to sign off one more time. Bayport a winner, 28-6 to for the crew and my partner Chris Wright. I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody. We really appreciate it, and we'll see you down the road.